now I will um, give it a stage to Borian Zafirovsky. He's a film director. Uh, he filmed uh, very interesting uh, movies, let's say. Uh, one that I watched uh, was Skopje Remixed. Uh, it was like a movie from more directors, like a collective work. Uh, he will explain us more how they did did it, did it. Uh, and it was about uh, the city of Skopje and the spirit of Skopje and I watched it when I was a student and it was very interesting for me because uh, we were in that time we were passing in a period when we were lost about our city and something like that and like this city this movie gave us um, uh, give us a feeling that okay we are from Skopje, Skopje is a good city and this kind of stuff so, um, hello Borian, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Can you okay. see me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay, yes. Cool. Uh, you can uh, share your screen if you have a presentation or you can just start speaking. Yeah, I'll just start speaking. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll start because you asked me about uh, Skopje Remix. Uh, well, our idea was that uh, we got tired from uh, movies that were selecting only some depressive parts of the Skopje, saying that's the reality, but the reality always has two sides. And the other side was that Skopje has also some really cool corners and some new uh, spaces that uh, we can recreate and we can uh, remix them and give them some new meaning and new new light. So basically, it's very similar for uh, as uh, what you do as architects and uh, reinventing some spaces. We are just reinventing them uh, through movies. Uh, but today, I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, creating a mood actually and what uh, our uh, our previous uh, speaker said Tata was really beautifully at the end that uh, we as artists uh, we have responsibility of uh, creating this uh, mood for, for the society so uh, <clears throat> that beautifully goes to what I wanted to uh, present today and that's um, one really metaphysical approach of how we create mood, uh, regardless if it's a mood in a movie or if it's a mood uh, made through some architectural piece. Uh, so, uh, if we agree that uh, uh, everything is vib vibration, so what you call a mood, uh, it's actually a vibration and our body with our senses uh, his ability to transform all these color shapes and light to transform them in some kind of emotion um, so uh, we don't see this vibration but that doesn't mean that uh, exists it's same like uh, wi-fi uh, so the main thing today uh, in today's le lecture is that uh, you create a building or a bridge uh, uh, when you create it uh, it's actually just the end product of your vibration or your mood when you uh, created it um, so uh, your talent as an architect uh, it's also a talent of uh, connecting with your higher self, not just as an architect, as an artist, me as a film director. It's uh, the main talent, it's uh, connecting with the, let's say, uh, to be in the state of uh, flow or the zone, uh, as some people call it in the sport world. Uh, so, um, <clears throat> Uh, so the more uh, you are tuned in, the more uh, you are into this zone, the better are the chances that you will create something more uh, meaningful, something more, let's say, beautiful, and something that will stand more in the time, and something that will uh, 
create some positive, let's say, domino effect in the society, uh, re regardless if it's a movie or it's a, if it's an architectural piece. A uh, couple of years ago, when I was doing a study on this uh, subject, I was reminded about uh, the phenomenon of uh, uh, what is called the Werther effect. Uh, I don't know if you know that, but in the uh, art world, uh, the Werther effect is known uh, because uh, Goethe, two centuries ago, wrote the uh, book uh, Suffering of the Young Werther. It's called the, the book. So the book was quite depressive and it ended with the suicide of the main uh, uh, character. So what, 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 what happened was that in the countries where the book was published, uh, the rate of suicide, especially in the young population, went up for I don't know how many percentage, but it was really high. So everybody got scared and they uh, they banned the book uh, from those uh, countries okay. and, and they I'm called so that thema, uh, yeah. and uh, they called that uh, a Werther effect. So basically what happened was that uh, somebody to creating an art piece, a book in this case, uh, created a negative domino effect in the society. So my idea was if you can create something like Werther effect, some negative domino effect, uh, you must be able to make something opposite of that and that probably uh, should be a happiness effect. Uh, and that's the title of my, my new movie and that's the theory be behind it. So uh, <clears throat> this ability actually to be tuned uh, with your higher self uh, give us a broader perspective and bigger knowledge of the things. Doesn't mean that you are some kind of channel and you are a puppet on the string and you just receive higher uh, ideas from the higher state. No, it's a synergy between your knowledge as an architect or a film director and let's call it the, the universe. So it's a synergy, it's kind of a co-creation. You know, when you don't have that, that's what is called like the writer block. You are not in the flow, you are not in the zone. So when LeBron James in the zone, he can easily do a triple double or Ronaldo, he can score a hit trick. Uh, in a football game. So it's a very similar thing when you're artist or when you're architect. Uh, for example, there are many like uh, theories that the pyramids or other uh, uh, perfect architectural pieces were uh, made uh, from uh, other species or aliens or somebody who is more intelligent uh, from, uh, than us. But actually, it was made from people. Uh, the only difference was they were not smarter than us. They were just more aligned uh, with, the, with themselves. Because in that time, they had less distractions like we have today. Today, we have lots of distractions from media, social media, Facebook, YouTube, movies, and so on. So because of all this uh, distraction, we lose the ability of being in the flow and creating something something uh, higher and something more beautiful. So uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, I make comparison uh, for like creating movies uh, that are not made from this state or making architecture uh, that are not made from a, a place of, of positive flow, let, let, let's call it. Uh, it's like a pollution. Like a pollution, you have ecology. In ecology, you have this pollution on a level of thought and on a level of aesthetics. So, uh, 
try not to create more of this pollution because as we can see we have lots of it we have on a level of aesthetics on a level of practicality on, on many levels and now you're in a position of of remixing that or in recreating that uh, that space so <clears throat> yeah i don't know if you can hear me yes we can hear you. okay because the connection got lost at some point okay um <clears throat> So, uh, um, the idea of this pollution uh, actually it's giving me more and more motivation to to create a positive domino effect uh, in creating the movies, and uh, maybe soon you'll be able to to check the the next movie uh the movie that i recently finished and i had a premiere it's called the domino effect uh one of the for example interesting innovation in this movie was that uh this is the first movie in the world that the sound design and the soundtrack are made with the with the sound healer so uh while you watch the the movie you get uh, healed because the topic is about a dying girl who is trying to uh to cure herself with the power of uh, positive thinking so uh, i didn't wanted the audience to have any kind of bad feeling through 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 the movie I kind of invented this new uh, process where the audience will be healed while is watching the the movie. Of course, this is just experiment. I don't know if it's working or not. Uh, like the reactions of people were was that they felt really pleasant during the movie. That uh, uh, they uh, like understood the story, but. Uh, Although it was a sad story, uh, uh, they didn't feel in any moment some kind of like uh, depression or lower mood, uh, for example. Because um, my idea is, and I think every artist or especially filmmaker is that uh, we we should uh, create that kind of state uh, in the cinema and by watching the movie that audience, if they come here emotionally, intellectually, uh, and so on. After the movie, they get on a higher level, at least intellectually, if not emotionally. And what happens lately, especially with Macedonian movies, is that you go emotionally here <laughs> and you go out somewhere here or below. I. I don't know. After watching uh, a Macedonian movie, I feel depressed for 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 one day. So I felt this uh, urge and need to 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 change this. And my approach is uh, that in order to change this, I need to change myself first to be the best self, and from a position of best best self, then to create a movie or object or architectural piece. Because you have to understand that you are the creator of that domino effect in the society. So that's basically it. Uh, maybe we can discuss maybe some of these ideas you already know, maybe some of your these ideas are completely new uh, uh, to you, but I'm able and I'm in a mood to answer all of your questions if there are any. Yes, uh, thank you, Burian. I would like to underline one sentence that you said pollution, and that you yeah. said pollution in the level of aesthetic and pollution in the level of practicality. Uh, yeah. So it, there is something very interesting like with uh, for example with italian people 
is that they all know since uh, age zero what is beautiful. Like, um, I don't know how to explain. Like, they know what is beautiful. And um, is it, it's, I don't say something beautiful only aesthetically, but also like uh, making a good ambient, beautiful ambient. And for example, uh, for Easter in Skopje, uh, which is organized in the, in the Sobar and Haram, in the main church, for me that's the most the worst event like organized in the name of easter it's like uh on the you are sitting in the middle of a street there is a barbecue there there is loud music it's not spiritual it's not moody it's not uh, you know and when you're in italy for christmas or for easter you feel like holy you feel doesn't matter if you're muslim or christian you feel the the mood of the of the spirit so I want to ask you how, I mean, what is your opinion? How do you teach people or how do you in, not impose, but learn the nation to, for, to, to clean themselves from this pollution <laughs> of, <laughs> of, or to level up the, the aesthetic and practicality? Do you, do you have an idea yeah. about that? Uh, yeah, it's a very difficult question. And, uh, the only thing you can do is uh, set an example. You can run and r uh, around and try to change people to be different, but you can set an example how probably like uh, you, uh, they should be, or uh, you should set up some positive example and always be flexible. For example, uh, I, I, I spoke about spirituality, but for me, that's not connected with religion or with some specific process. It doesn't have to be anything what someone called it like deep. Uh, I don't think uh, like there is more spiritu spirituality in a football locker room than uh, in, a, in a church because football players are more in the zone and more happy than people going in the church. You know, spirituality, it's not about God or religion. You know, watching a comedy, it's, it's also a getting some way of getting into this flow. That's why Italians, they have this, you know, they are, they are uh, hedonist and hedonism, it's for me, hedonism is one of the ways of being uh, spiritual because you honor the beauty, the life, and bottom line, that's what spirituality is. It's not something deep. It's not the frisks in the church. It's not connected with uh, with suffering. And now is the time, maybe that new we as a new generation, we have to redesign the spirituality. Because for me, spirituality mm. it has a bad rep uh, on the level of aesthetics. You know, if you see mm. God that looks scary <laughs> and you, you get all the wrong ideas about the universe. No, God is somebody like David Bowie, for, for example, if you, if you ask me. Uh, God is a guy who is really happy and he's in a discotheque, you know. It's mm. not uh, the guy from above who is, who is judging us. So we need to free ourselves and the society from many like wrong beliefs that are actually making this pollution on a level of thought and level of aesthetics. And the only way is that first we clean ourselves, we tune with ourselves in a way that it's pleasant for us, for somebody can be uh, running or watching a comedy or making love or listening to the music that he loves and then when he's built up emotionally then then uh, to create you know and there are more and more artists that are aware of this uh, David Lynch it's it's one of them although he created horror movies and so on but recently he said that uh, Finally, he realized that what he's doing and he started teaching meditation now and he's opening schools for TM uh, in whole uh, America uh, because he realized that 
what you create, you know, even as a director in a movie, reflects on the society and it reflects on you. So he was really unhappy during his life and he didn't know why. And very often we have cases where a director creates a movie and then that movie uh, uh, happened in his life. And they, are, mm. they were not aware why that is happening. They were not aware that they are projecting mm. their future through making some movie, which is mm. really scary when you find out because most of the movies are based on drama and contrast. So mm. how do you write a drama in a movie without a contrast, you know? So it's, it's very difficult. Like I had this idea that I want to make a pure positive movie for 19 minutes doesn't mean a comedy or something cheap no, just a high level of beauty for, for 90 minutes but i'm i'm getting discouraged from like my ex-professors or people from the field saying mm. that that will be boring like nobody will watch it because mm. people want to watch drama so i still have doubts but i think I will do this movie at, at some point. Just 90 minutes of of pure beauty from a higher state. Yeah, so uh, for example, for us architects, it's like living and working in uh, Skopje and it's a bit uh, unhappy like to be an architect and to live here and to work here because the jobs that are offering to you are to do some uh residential buildings or apartments that you don't agree with the design but you should do it in order to be sold in order to get money to get paid and this is why most of the um, uh, young architects are in depression because they were studying and they were full of energy they were full of ambition and then they go down because like they don't work what they were expecting to work so me personally i'm kind of surfing I'm, I'm i'm i understood that i don't want to work projects that don't make me happy this doesn't bring me all, always to like get paid but i understood that being happy is more important is like is my kind of salary it's like the the most important salary that i can get the most important like uh making your soul um full you know so yeah, I think this is an important is important message like to, to everybody. And if everybody refuses the bad job, like there will be no bad jobs, maybe. I hope. I don't know. <laughs> what do the students uh, think about this uh, discussion or uh, participants? I'm sure they have opinion. Elena? Or who, who turned on the mic? Anastasia, someone? They are confused. Maybe all this was too, too different and uh, too new. I, I come from a different world. I'm a filmmaker. Yes, but guys, just speak actually, about your... I was really surprised how... Uh, I mean, uh, I, I get surprised about it every day and uh, every time that I see some foreign people who have exactly the same thoughts as we do here and the, we have same discussions with our friends, colleagues or even not architects like uh, artists, filmmakers, philosophers, psychologists. The topic about the, even the David Lynch and his uh, transcendental uh, meditation is very popular here and I mean it's we are more connected and we do have more common than we think we have even if we live in a different countries and I think uh, as we see the world, there's so many same um, um, visions. Like, for example, for me, what you were um, um, now talking about, like spirituality and God and everything. I mean, this this is the questions that we deal with every day when we meet friends and when we have discussions. Even like the job that you mentioned, Sarah, that you are refusing the bad job and there are no bad jobs anymore. I mean, these are really similar topics. So I think it doesn't matter that the students from Georgia or students from, Sco from Tbilisi or Skopje, they will de deal with these topics as well. So I think it should be interesting for everyone. 
who mm. discuss it. And I'm happy actually we don't have any fundamentalists here, or maybe we have and they are not speaking themselves because they would disagree with you. <laughs> with in for, some from points. where? From like the description of uh, spirituality or mm -hmm. uh, or like how do we see the God and uh, or like how how we see to be like how no, where here, we are here. seeking uh, our spiritual needs. No? Mm -hmm. no, here we have uh, like mixed religions in our group and this is what I'm, what I'm happy about. Uh, but this is That's not about selling yeah. some uh, religion or way of seeing like Burian can think one way I can oh, listen yeah. to him understand him and like I can totally be Think different way like it's about sharing our way of seeing of things, course, you know yeah. So no one should yeah. take that. This is that what we are selling now like okay guys You should trust this and that's it. You know, we just discuss this this stuff yeah, uh, actually, that, that's the beauty about the world. It's uh, the diversity of opinion and, and views. If there is uh, just one truth and one view, that it's like having just one color, so everything is blue, you know? Mm. Uh, or you are going to a restaurant and there is just one food. There is only pizza in the whole world, and that's the truth. The pizza is the truth. No, the, the truth is that we create our reality and we believe in what is true to us so diversity of god's beliefs that's really beautiful and i'm not trying to sell one point and that, that's why i said like for everybody there is a different way of connecting them with themselves doesn't regardless of the religion or if they're artists you know that's why i mentioned sports you know in in sports they have completely different uh, approach but i wanted to say that the bottom line of everything it's it's the the, the same you know mm -hmm. students please ask question i know that you have but you're afraid that uh, you should sound maybe too intellectual but actually you can uh, ask it in very simple way it's not so I, I will ask it in a very simple way, but I'm really curious and I think maybe also students. Uh, but then thank you, first of all. Um, I would like to ask like, okay, we always hear like directors, architects, similar professions, they have some intersections. Uh, how do you see this and how do you feel uh, this? and? Uh, more, maybe more concrete question as well. When you think about your scenes, do you already have uh, uh, your imagination, how it should be, or maybe sometimes you get inspired from some space and then want to create some scene that you have not thought about, but you want that place to be in your movie? Maybe generally you can... Yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. It's, it's a very good uh, question. First, uh, there is a big, big similarity that uh, I realized by giving some lectures at the Faculty of Architecture in Skopje. And then when I met, met the students there, I, I felt like they are some of my cousins, you know, they are not directors, they are not my brothers, my sister, but my cousins. And I think the similarity is that uh, uh, like in architecture, it's not just art, it's also a craft. You have lots of practical things that you need to do in order to make one architectural piece. It's also in the movies, you know, many people think uh, that uh, making movies this really fancy romantic thing, but they don't see the practical work that goes behind and that it's... Uh, maybe the hardest job uh, in the world. Like when I say these people left to me because they see me sometimes with actresses and they think that, that that's a life of a film director. But actually the whole preparation of a movie, it's around four years. Probably it's uh, longer than uh, making one uh, 30 floor building, uh, you know? Like even Tarantino that has the uh, perfect conditions you know, and I already a status and a name to get all the money that he, he uh, needs. He needs a four years to make one movie. And here in Macedonia, 
because everything is much more complicated and the film industry is on a really low level, we need uh, four to seven years to create a movie. So on that, on that level, that's the similarity. And about the creating a scene, it's really different. Uh, for me, it's like a downloading one mosaic of pictures and then I'm collecting that mosaic. Like in the beginning of the movie, I don't have a real intention. Usually I don't have a real intention that, okay, this is the topic that I want to make a movie and I will just think of this. Usually I have get glimpses of uh, spaces, light, ideas, or I fall in love. So it's probably some mixture of those things give me some uh, idea. But uh, connected with uh, spaces, uh, for example, uh, because as students, usually we, we find fantasize about uh, some stories and uh, objects then later that later we realize that we cannot find them or we don't have a budget to create them and many of those scripts uh, end up at home in a drawer so then our professors they gave us a really good exercise uh, and until these days i i work like that it's actually finding the space that exists already exists and uh, using that space to be inspired to write the story that happened in that space. And then that space, it's perfect for that story. I don't need millions to, for that space to, to create it. And it's, it's really simple and it's working and it's what you call a believable scene or a movie for, for, for the audience. Because the, the objects, they, they, the, they transfer to us some emotions and ideas that we we just uh, with our ability as film directors we create them in a storyline. So we practically translate mm. one aesthetic and one story into something else. We we translate architecture into a story on some level. I think. Mm. I would like to ask, how do you choose uh, your actors in your uh, movies? Uh, well, like the perfect actors for that movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, I do castings. That's like the most regular way and most practical way. Um, most of the directors, they make close castings only for actors. I make open castings for everybody uh, because I always search for some new faces that will bring something new because we have here in Macedonia just a couple of actors that are famous and we see them in every movie and it's a little bit boring, you know? Mm. One actor, he, he plays a chauffeur of a bus, in the next <laughs> movie he's a scientist, you know, uh, just unbelievable, you know, and uh, our job as a director is not to teach so much the actors how to act, but it's to choose the right actor for the right role. When you choose the right person for the right role, then everything fits afterwards perfectly. You don't need to teach them, you know, they are originally dead. So I tend to search more uh, in people who are not professional actors and the main actor uh, in The Happiness Effect, it was her first movie, she was 18, she never acted anywhere and I can tell you that uh, uh, she was the best actor and she's like five classes above from any actor that it's in that movie that are actors for, for 50 years just because of the purity of the innocence and of the emotions and the character that is chosen for, for the right role. Uh, in Happiness Effect, for example, the main role was written for an 18 year old boy. And I was making the casting for one year and I couldn't find this personality, this persona that 
you will watch it for one hour and a half, you know. It has, uh, it must have some factor X, so you watch it and you're impressed. And after one year, one girl came for, for a casting for a really small role in the movie. But then when I saw that she has this factor, uh, I said, okay, maybe it's time for doing something radical. Maybe I should give her the role of the boy. I will not change anything in that role. I will just change the name and I will leave everything the same. Because I think in our core, boys and girls are really similar, especially nowadays. Especially nowadays, you see boys more feminine and girls mm. more masculine. And I think this concept of, uh, you know, just switching, uh, it's really interesting. And I thought that maybe the next movie, when I write it for a boy and a girl, I'll, I'll write it for a boy and a girl, but on a casting, I'll just switch the roles. I'll give this role of the girl to a boy and the other way around. And by that, I will get something interesting, something that it's out of this cliche that we watch in the movie, what boy represents and what girl represents, because I think we can be so, so different and so unique. Every person, every character, you know, for me, doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. Mm. Thank you for your answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone else wants to ask something? In the movie, it's called The Happiness Effect. Uh, there is a teaser and trailer on YouTube that uh, you can... Yeah, we will, we will share. Yeah, and also this way the plot was interesting that she said because we also work the same way, especially in this workshop. We are given specific spots uh, to the students to design an urban equipment on it. And so it's the same, like we give to students, okay, this is your place. So imagine now uh, what design there will be. But when we are designing, we're thinking what kind of scenarios will happen there. Are people are going to sit? Are people are going to dance? Are people are going to stay where? So like kind of the process is same, but we filter it through shapes and you filter it through uh, video. So yeah, there are many parallel uh, things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting, especially uh, in movies, the set designers are usually architects uh, or with mm -hmm. that kind of background and very often architects uh, switch into making movies maybe that's your next profession you know will bring yeah. you more happiness uh, you, you, yeah. you should check that possibility really like uh, i i interact the best with uh, architects uh, as uh, set designers uh, mm. And then if you ask an architect to what could be your other profession, if not architect, I think many, many of them will answer director. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yes, we're directing people's life. Yeah. In, yeah. Because in terms of managing, it's the same. You're managing a huge team that no one else exactly. sees. Because at the end you have one product and... Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And as a film director, your responsibility is actually uh, making uh, this team work together or what I call like, uh, I try to make a synergy and harmony between the sectors because we have lots of different sectors like uh, costume, they have to be aligned with set design. Uh, they need to work together because it's all part of one piece. So mm. me as a director, I, I need to make this harmony be between these old people. And how do I make this? I make first myself in some kind of peace harmonically, and then I can transfer uh, this to, to the crew. It's not easy. It takes lots of years of, of practice, but I'm really happy that uh, all my actors and my crew, they are telling me, oh, uh, this is the first movie where nobody's nervous, nobody's cursing, and they are telling me that 
I bring this piece and it's really impressive that actually you can work on this and that you can manifest on some level and you have to understand it's it's same like working on muscles it's same like going into a gym you're not going to come to this level just by one day being happy and euphoric you know you have to work on this and not change tactics you have to understand that it's really important for you to be calm and happy not because of the end product first of mm. all or because of yourself Mm. The end product, it's something secondary, you know, when very often people, they meditate, they, 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 they wish for things just for the end product, just for the car. And they, they, then they get the car, they're happy for three days and they are back to the same level of uh, emotions and they don't know what they did wrong. So, uh, your investment it's yourself you have to invest in yourself as much as you possible because when you invest in yourself i mean this is a cliche but it's so true when you invest in yourself then you can offer things to other people otherwise you don't have anything to to offer and i've seen many talented people my students many uh they are talented on a level of uh, aesthetics but they cannot transfer that into a movie they cannot make a movie because they are anxious unhappy they cannot deal with the pro with their personal problems and then uh, you see one beautiful idea on a level of uh, paper as a screenplay and then you see one horrible movie because everything went wrong because there are too many people and there are too many moving parts in a process like this that can go wrong so when there are too many moving parts you cannot control them but you can control yourself and your flow and through your flow then uh you get you know like help from the universe let's call it good or, or whatever like I have one example uh, in middle of a shooting um, uh, the jury from Berlinale came to Skopje they got interesting uh, in the project they gave some money uh, uh, to us they invested in the project so I had to stop the shooting for two hours and go with them for for dinner and present them some scenes that we shot so uh, I gave uh, directions to my assistant to make that scene that is simple, just to shoot details like cigarette, cups, so simple things that they don't have to do anything with aesthetics. Just for two hours. I came back after two hours. They told me that the main actor is in hospital. Uh, the other two, they had fight. I was like, no, you are kidding me. No, they said, well, the main actor, he's in hospital. Uh, my assistant gave him like 20 cigarettes to, to smoke just for, for this shot. <laughs> so he, he fainted. Uh, <laughs> my uh, assistant from set design, uh, people, they uh, came to give her, how it's called? Like, uh, infusion. Uh, yeah, infusion. So I, I, I thought at the beginning that they're teasing me. You know, I, I thought that it's a joke. I said, okay, guys, like, <laughs> and then they said, no, but then it's true. When you're not here, everything is collapsing in the same moment. So uh, I, I don't want to break, but I just want to tell you from experience, even I'm amazed that, you know, actually that works, uh, that you have to transfer this harmony and even if you are not in a like purest harmonic state because that's not possible guys like we are not buddha or jesus or whatever but just being closer to some emotional state for, of like normal being then through a talk with them with a like basic psychology you can transfer this and you can create this synergy between people sometimes i come to a lecture I'm not like in the pure positive energy. I'm not uh, like 10 emotionally, if you say from one to 10. I come 
you know, as a seven. And then through talking these good, positive ideas, we all as a group, we come to some higher emotional state. So it's like uh, going on the uh, stairs step by step. So don't blame yourself if you're not in a positive uh, mood. Uh, there are like principles that I teach for creating. Uh, I used to wait for this like mood, super mood to come and then to, to create. And that doesn't happen every day and all the time. You're not in love every day or you didn't have a, the best time of your life in the discotheque. And so I realized that I need a long time to write the script in that level. Just expecting that just something to come from above when I'm in a good mood. But now I started practicing through working to come to this step by step. If I'm like emotionally five or six, then I sit to write and slowly, like slowly I'm building uh, myself, especially when you are working and thinking it's a, some kind of uh, meditation because you forget about other problems. So emotionally you grow through the process of working and then it's totally okay. So hmm. don't wait to be perfectly happy and then to create. No, but just if you are really unhappy, then you better go for a run or for a drink or for something else. And then when you're in some vicinity of some, let's say, normal state like five or six, then you can start working and build up and ideas will start to flow more and more. And you build up you like you warm up yourself like in a gym you warm up and after half an hour or hour like you come to this higher state when you say oh my god i'm so genius and i'm i'm so great and there are many different methods like i realized like using a classical music you know just playing a classical music that harmonize the space around me harmonize the thoughts and i realized that the parts that i wrote uh, in a screenplay for a movie that were written under uh, influence of uh, uh, classical music, for example, I realized that usually I don't change those scenes because when we are writing a movie, we write like we rewrite the screenplay like 20 times. We have 20 drafts. So I realized that scenes in the draft that were written under uh, influence of, let's say, classical music, they were all like had some symmetry. They were all like uh, dramaturgically good and they stand the the test of of, of time mm. okay uh, thank you very much Borian it was very interesting as always your speaking is very uh, inspirational and motivational we as architects uh, because as you said uh, we are artists but crowds but sometimes we go more into crafts and forget this uh, poetic part so it's good to come <laughs> back and a little bit think about this and this is why I invited you for the last day because today is our last day. So to like calm us all down in <laughs> one. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>